steel ball, which I'll make black. Now I don't have any photo editing skills, so or video editing skills, so I'm just going to do this all real time. Now let's go ahead and put this ping pong ball right here on the side. If I balance it on the side of the beaker, we know that the balancing scale will tip to the left. Okay, and that's just because we're just adding the weight of the ping pong ball with the system on the left, and hence this will go down. Okay, well let's do one more thing. Let's go ahead and transport this ball instead on top of the water. Just floating nicely on top of the water, and since it's a ping pong ball, it will float and not sink. Well, we can see that the same thing should happen. This should remain going down. Now, a few things are happening at this time. So we'll do a free body diagram off to the side. We have the water in the left beaker and the ping pong ball. Gravity is acting on the ping pong ball, and that is just FG of the ping pong ball. This water is hence putting a kind of a normal force on the ping pong ball going up. And it's going to equal only because this ping pong ball is not moving. So FG is actually going to equal to Fn caused by the water. So you're probably wondering, okay, so the forces cancel out. Nothing should happen. Well, technically, the force is just canceled out. This scale shouldn't have even went down to the left. But we already know a priori that it's going to go down to the left. Hence, we know that there's another force acting in this entire system. And that other force is the force of the fact that the ping pong ball is pushing the water down. So the water is actually also experiencing an additional force from the ping pong ball onto itself. So we obviously, we have the weight of the water, we have all these other forces, we have an infinite amount of forces going on in this system. Weight of the water, the normal force from the beaker, the pressures from the side of the beaker, from the air. We have all those things, but they all cancel out. What I'm going to be drawing are the three forces that matter now in this case. Well, these two cancel out, so I guess they don't matter too much either, but it's worth explaining. But this extra force that we see on the water, on top obviously of the water's gravitational force from itself, is we also have the water's additional weight because of the fact that the ping pong ball is pushing down on it. So we have gravity pushing down on the ping pong ball, we have water pushing up on the ping pong ball, and we have the force of gravity from the ping pong ball pushing down on the water from gravity. And guess what? They are all actually equal and then P P to water. Okay? They're actually all gonna be equal. And even if we even if we are to eliminate force of gravity here, or not eliminate it, but at least ignore it, we'll see that this upward force of the water on this ping pong ball is equal to the downward force of the ping pong ball on water. Kind of like the same as if you rest a book on a table, the downward force from the book onto the table, book to table, would equal to the upward force from the table to book. This is called Newton's third law, and I'll present that as N3. Newton's third law states that all forces experience an opposite and equal reactive force. And that is what the force of normal and the force of G of the ping pong ball to the water is demonstrating now. So now we know that even though the ping pong ball is resting on the water, there is an overarching force from the ping pong ball down to the water, which is causing the balance scale to move to the left. Now let's go one more step. And now all these does not exist. However, I will now draw a ping pong ball submerged inside the water tied down from a string to the bottom of the beaker. Now let's go ahead and micro look at this again. We have the beaker, we have the water, we have the ping pong ball, we have a string. Okay, well we have a few forces, we have a lot of forces actually, but a few that really matter.
And the unit of matter is the gravitational force of the ping pong ball. The force that is buoyant, so I'll call it now a buoyancy force, Fb, and we know they're the same. And the reason why we know they're the same is because of Newton's second law, which is, all we, which is also what we used for knowing that these two are the same and these two are the same. It's just saying that since this ball is not accelerating anywhere, that the forces that um, all uh, that all work on this ball are equal. So these two forces that go vertically should be equal since the ball is not accelerating. So now the same thing applies. We have a buoyant force pushing up. We have a gravitational pu force pushing down. And lo and behold, because of the fact that the water is pushing up on the ball, we use Newton's third law to show that the ball is actually pushing down on the water. So I'll call ping pong to water from gravity. So now... And, and, you know, that's also equal to um, the other forces. So now we have Fb and Fg being equal because the ball is not accelerating. And we have Fb and Fg pp to water being the same because of Newton's third law, which states that the ping pong ball pushing down on the water should equal to the water pushing up on the ping pong ball. Now... Since the water, since the ping pong ball is now submerged in the water, we have a net force of the entire system from the ping pong ball adding on to the system. Because the other two forces that really matter cancel out in these two situations, leaving only this force. And so this is the net force added from the ping pong ball. Now we didn't do anything to the right side. All we know that is we, if we tie down the ping pong ball on the left, this balance scale will go to the left. The right is a different story. Let's go ahead and analyze that real quickly. I'm going to simply, in this case, do the same thing actually, just so we can go be thorough. I rest this ball on the side of this beaker. So it balanced on this beaker. Let's go ahead and analyze that. Oh, we don't even have to analyze it actually because since it's resting on the beaker and it really doesn't matter, I can, ha I can also hold it with the string up slightly, you know, enough so that it doesn't fall over. Even if I hold up with the string slightly, this ball is pretty massive. It's still going to make this scale, not tip, but basically barge down to the right, even if I'm holding it with a string with a little bit of force upward. We know that the force of gravity from this ball is definitely pushing on the beaker. Now, mind you, um, <coughs> worth mentioning now, even if the ball is on the beaker, the same concepts apply. We have the force of gravity from the steel ball being countered by the force normal force from the beaker and because of the ball not accelerating these two forces equal each other and also since the ball is pushing down on the beaker beaker is pushing up on the ball um, and because the beaker is pushing up from the ball the ball is pushing down on the beaker so I'll just say steel to beaker leaving thus a net force pushing down on the entire system. Now let's go ahead and do the same thing, except let's skip the fact that it's the, the floating part because we know the steel ball is not going to float. So let's just put this straight into the water. And even if we have it holding with the string, because I guess we don't want it to touch the bottom for some reason. So let's put it straight in the water and let's go ahead and draw one more free body diagram. And by now you probably know what I'm going to draw. Black ball straight. Okay, so we have force gravity on the steel ball is going to have a buoyant force. Actually, I drew this wrong. I'm sorry. The buoyant force, which is going to be less than the gravitational force, but it doesn't matter because we also have a new force 
That's force of string tension, or, or F of T. So the sum, don't worry about my length of the arrows because that's obviously a little bit not to scale. But we see that the sum of the force of tension plus the force buoyant of the water is equal to the force of gravity on the ball. Hence, using Newton's second law, we know that they have to equal to each other because acceleration is equal to zero. Hence, the forces all cancel out. But are we not forgetting one last thing? Well, check this out. Because the buoyant force acting up on this steel ball is such based on the volume of the ball, as we know, and the force of gravity on the steel ball is pushing down on it, we have one more force. And this force is actually a counter to the buoyant force. So I'll call this the force of gravity steel ball to water. Um, however, <laughs> offset to only be proportional to the buoyant force. Okay? This is kind of... Um, a hard thing to swallow. This force is the thing that really literally tips the scale to the right. It's the force of gravity that the steel ball has on the water because of this. So obviously we know from Newton's second law these two forces are equal to this force. Newton's third law says that this force has to equal to the force on the water. So here's 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 the water. The force on the water which, oh, by the way, sorry, <laughs> which, by the way, is here. So here's the water. So FB and FG of the steel ball to the water, counteracting the buoyant force, is equal to each other based on Newton's third law. So let me go ahead and write that. And this is a lot to write in terms of subscript. I'm not, I need to even write it, so there you go. It was my subscript, okay? So now all we have to prove now, because we already showed that the scale tips to the right, now to convince you, we have to prove that, I'll write it one more time, that this right here is greater than that. And if so, obviously, this scale will go to the right. Now, this is based on the counter of buoyant force. And we know buoyant force is proportional to the ball, uh, volume. Sorry, it's proportional to the volume of the balls. Both balls are the same volume. Hence, if this FG was based on the buoyant force or the counter to buoyant force, the scale shouldn't really even move. This right here is a counter to the buoyant force. This here is a, actually not a counter to the buoyant force, but it's just the added weight of this of this ping pong ball. So this FG is actually equal to the F force weight of the ping pong ball. Whereas this FG is actually the force of buoyancy that counters both the ping pong ball and the steel ball. So steel slash ping pong ball. And we see the since the ping pong ball floats on water, we know that the density of water is greater than the density of ping pong ball. Hence, if you take the volume of the ping pong ball's weight in water, you'll see that the buoyant force from the volume of the ping pong ball slash steel ball is going to be greater because the weight of water equal to the volume of the ping pong ball is greater than the weight of the ping pong ball equal to the volume of the ping pong ball. So water is worth more weight from the same volume as the ping pong ball of that volume. Okay? And just because the water is more dense than the ping pong ball, the steel ball side will go down and not the ping pong ball. I hope this makes it a little bit more clear extremely messy drawing and I'm really not the best at really teaching things in general 
Um, please leave my comments. All right.